Remember when we thought the apocalypse was going to come in the form of some kind of deity unleashing their rage upon the human species? And then we graduated to possible nuclear armaments as we moved the clock's hands closer to midnight, waiting for us to be responsible for the precisely timed demise of ourselves. Or, or, we, or we just thought it was going to be uh, you know, like a Mad Max situation. Those were the uh, those were the good old days, huh? Now it appears that it's not going to come in the form of any of those things. It might have come in the form of the novel coronavirus, which is forcing all of us to stay quarantined. Look, I'm sure some of you have regressed to thinking that this is God's wrath, and I can assure you that it is not. It is nature's wrath, and hell hath no fury as the wrath of Mother Nature. Now, technically, health hath nothing, because hell isn't real. Okay, so that was a bit dramatic. It it might not be the a global extinction, but rather the extinction of late-stage capitalism. Over the last few weeks, we've seen the total lack of preparation from the greatest country in the world that's rediscovering its greatness, America. The United States went into a variety of stages of panic when the novel coronavirus, or COVID-19, became more and more of a reality. Journalist Dylan Radigan described America going through this as like the five stages of grief. At first, it was total denial. American hubris and the big hefty balls of capitalism would never let something like this happen. As the cases began to spring up, around the country, and both the CDC and the FDA ignored academics' early testing applications, the country shifted to anger. Well, okay, so they shifted to anger when sports balls were canceled, not when the academics were saying that there's a way to contain the spread of the new virus, and, well, the fucking CDC didn't listen. So Americans were told to quarantine themselves because there was no way to test everyone. And the only people that can afford the test are, are, are getting them, you know, like Tom Hanks or Idris Elba. Rich people and celebrities really are the only ones that can get them. So the system used the anger that people had and turned it into fear and panic. People hoarded toilet paper, bread, milk, and so many eggs that you would think that they were trying to repopulate the planet with chickens. Now, this panic didn't stop America from going out and drinking the same kind of whiskey at several different parts, bars to celebrate. Wait, what? what is St. Patrick's Day supposed to celebrate? Alcohol is, alcoholism derived from the potato famine caused by rich oligarchs need to hoard wealth? As we were told, excessive outings would uh, further spread the virus, for which we don't have a means to test, inoculate, or cure, the angrier and more scared Americans got. Eventually, things got to a point where bars and restaurants were shutting down, gatherings of more than five people were prohibited, and a majority of working-class Americans found themselves in a peculiarly shitty place. A, a place where they had lost a large means of their w- income. Folks in the service industry, full-time entertainers, hourly workers, and anyone in the gig economy have become unemployed with no way to supplement an income for the foreseeable future. And that anger turns into bargaining. As we were all trying to figure out what skills we can utilize to fund our lives, fear not regular Americans, Wall Street has been bailed out. Okay, the Fed injected $1.5 trillion into Wall Street to keep the quote-unquote economy going. And of course, they had to inject it because Wall Street and the monarchs of capitalism are addicted to their money. And look, this wasn't from a large pool of savings or anything. It was literally made-up money. According to the man that runs the Fed, they went into the computer and made up money for the banks to play with. But it turns out it really didn't save the economy, right? No one was investing in anything. They were all hoarding and saving their money to survive. Turns out Wall Street isn't what runs the economy. It's us, 
the regular, average, everyday spender that's not going to be spending for a long while. And what are we going to spend our, our money on anyway? I mean, all of our favorite things are closed. Our DIY local mom and pop joints are closed up. There's no sports ball. Shit, there isn't even anywhere to purchase a physical edition of pornography. Now, all of these things have been deemed non-essential. But not cannabis, though. In San Francisco, at least, cannabis dispensaries are staying open because they are necessary medication. So, as Wall Street was getting bailed out for, realistically, uh, no fucking reason, there were a few politicians bargaining on our behalf. Tulsi Gabbard, who has unfortunately suspended her presidential campaign, introduced H.R. 897, an emergency universal basic income resolution to ensure that all Americans are actually financially taken care of. As a majority of us lose our primary and or all of our sources of income, you know, this this was the primary focus of Andrew Yang, another presidential candidate that recently dropped out. Tulsi recommended an income of $1,000 a month for every American adult. So after the Democratic Outsiders resolution had been presented to Congress, and how many people were into the idea, various members of Congress from both sides of the aisle began presenting their own ideas. Ilhan Omar presented her idea of $1,000 for every American adult and at least $500 for every child. But it was pretty nebulous whether this was a a one-time payment or a monthly payment. Republicans like Mitt Romney were also talking about sending a stimulus of $1,000 to every American citizen in the country. And perhaps that's because they realized that pulling yourself up by your bootstraps is going to spread the virus more and more considering the amount of germs and viruses that are actually present on boots. And then the Trump administration came out and said, well, every American citizen above the age of 18 will be receiving some kind of check on April 6th and then a corresponding one in May as well. Now that you have both the populist and the corporate Republicans advocating for a progressive economic model that would bolster the American middle class. The Democrats have to outleft them or decide to go in the complete opposite direction. Democrats like Chuck Schumer are calling to expand the unemployment program, but it's a very limited system that wouldn't really help everybody that is affected by this virus. A lot of people under the poverty limit make their money in cash, a direct check for every American adult, even if it's based on income, will immensely help the workers. You had some Democrats like Cory Booker saying that it should be $2,000 a month. Now, I'm pretty sure Booker was one of those people that judged and laughed at Yang's idea of universal basic income and would keep asking, well, where are you going to get all that money from? Well, the same place you got money to bomb seven countries to steal their natural resources. Same place we got the money to pump $1.5 trillion to enrich rich people. You have representatives like Ro Khanna advocating for $6,000 for every American making under $65,000 a year. I mean, that's a fuckload of us, and some of us are too poor to appear in the system. So the question is, what do we do about those folks that don't show up? Now, some Republicans are saying that this needs to be a small loan to to small businesses and corporations that would allow American workers to have a job to return to. And as nice as that sounds, we kind of don't need a loan when we don't have a steady income. We need a way to keep ourselves alive and taken care of. And the bootstraps ideology isn't going to prevent a total economic collapse. And besides, why don't these people tell the Wall Street and the airline industry to pick themselves up by the bootstraps and get a loan? Look, a debt economy like the one that got us into this mess won't, won't and never has helped us. So why pres- present the same old ideas over and over again? Now, Trump's plan is to send a direct check to every American Citizen. I mean, that's a huge step forward to the bailout of the American worker. Now, as the date of this recording, the amount is varying based on household income. But 
who knows? It could be changing like right fucking now, right? The speed that the news is moving in and, and covering this outbreak is beyond insane. At this point, he might as well have secured his reelection, though, because right now the DNC is jamming Joe Biden down our throats. And if you're progressive, that means it's having the same effect as drinking an entire cup full of Ipecac. Biden has no interest in helping the American work, <clears throat> working class in this time of need. In fact, he says to trust the corporations and the insurance companies. The Democrats have lost – they've lost a race if this is who they're going to put up on the ballot. The real test will be whether or not Trump will keep this universal basic income or will he abandon it after the outbreak is taken care of. Will he shift the narrative back to demonizing socialism after it's bailed out his incompetent administration and their blunders with this crisis? If we take this time in, in, in the quarantine to sharpen our critical thinking skills, then the shifting narratives, hypocrisies, and propaganda from either side won't stick or sink in. But... And again, the cognitive dissonance in our society is uh, pretty fucking strong. Some folks are refusing to admit that they're getting help from a socialist idea that was conceived over 500 years ago. Some folks are calling what Trump is doing as Americanism. Wait, America didn't invent socialism. In fact, it's done everything in its power to reject it. The blunders of this crisis is Americanism. Now, if the Democrats were actually smart, they would advocate for this system to be instated permanently and start reforming the, the way our economy works. If they want their party to survive the dementia patient that is Joe Biden, then they need to push for a bold reform of our current system. Maybe they should befriend and learn from these political outsiders like Tulsi Gabbard Andrew Yang and Bernie Sanders instead of smearing them, shunning them out of debates and hiding all of their votes. And this leads us right to depression. At this point, the champions of capitalism and Western civilization have to realize that the only thing that can save them from the inadequacies of capitalism is socialism. And even the Trump administration has seen this. And look, you really shouldn't feel bad that capitalism is having performance issues right now. Look, crises can be a very stressful thing, and I'm, and I'm sure it's happened to all of the sociopathic economic systems. Now, the Democratic Socialist Senator from Vermont, one Bernie Sanders, has outlined a way we can push through this crisis without it getting worse and continue to jeopardize our way of life. And parts of this is by fundamentally changing the way we live our lives instead of rugged individualism and slapping our dicks on the table while beer bonging weak over manufactured loggers it's time that we come together and think about this problem with a rational mind and community efforts sanders has proposed that the army corps of engineers and the national guard get called in to set up field hospitals to run tests for free on americans to see if they are positive for covid-19 this is pretty much what every country in asia ha has done and seen a huge decrease in their numbers perhaps if the cdc and the fda can put their virally infected dicks away for like a moment they, and, and talk to these Asian scientists instead of standing idly by while America begins to descend into xenophobia, this would be over in a matter of a few weeks. Now, Sanders also called for a moratorium on all rent, debt, and mortgages till the crisis is over. Look, people are struggling to get by as it is. And now with this pandemic, it's going to get even harder. We don't need bankers, landlords, collection agencies, hucksters, and fraudsters coming in and after the American people for their money, okay? We, we need a radical shift in how this economy is run. We don't need an economy that's run on ruthless profiteering, but one that's run on compassion and understanding that the world sometimes takes a hefty shit on you and we might need each other to help clean each other up. You know, he also called for the homeless to be taken care of. And by by using underutilized spaces like vacant homes and hotels, this would decrease the spread of the disease and ensure that some of the most vulnerable people in our society are taken care of. This would mean an economy that would 
counteract the wrath of nature with humanity and compassion. And finally, he has also called for an oversight committee to be formed to ensure the corporations won't be exploiting people and price gouging in a time of need. Now, this also kind of sounds like a no-brainer, but those that need to inject cash directly into their rectums, well, you know, so that they can feel the rush of cold, hard cash in, into their system, well, they need the idea of exploiting humans for their basic needs. And so, you know, a, a society run on not exploitation and compassion and it's it's a very foreign concept to them almost as foreign as needing a rectal cash injection the depressing part to every champion of capitalism is that the monarchs of your system didn't come up with an answer but rather the system that you've been demonizing for the last three or four decades and here comes the acceptance Capitalism in its current unrestrained form, with all its overwhelming ideas of freedom and dominance, exploitation, greed, and humorous, has failed us. A lot of us haven't been able to accept that yet. A lot of us still want to vote for Biden because they believe the status quo associated with a, a, a different letter or a color will be, will be better. It'll lead us right back to all of this, though. You know, an ill-prepared system in denial of its flaws and failures. What we need to do now is to rebuild a system that isn't rooted in profiteering and greed. We need to build a system that is built on compassion, logic, understanding, and humanity. A system that understands that when people go through a rough time, we shouldn't be punished for it. A system that isn't looking to exploit its citizens. We need to accept that the current way of doing things has put us in this disaster and has a no way of getting us out. We have to accept that these parties won't save us. They will argue about the numeric value of money that will be helpful to all of us without actually applying said numeric value to anything. They'll argue about who is right or wrong and champion a market that, that's just a mascot for rich people's money. We are not beholden to the party, but quite the opposite. We don't serve the government, but rather the other way around. We will save us. We will get through this together, with or without those that got us into the mess in the first place. Capitalism is dying. And the only thing that we can do to revive any semblance of an economic system going forward is a system of collective social democracy. And that is a truth we all have to accept. I currently have lost about six weeks worth of work because of COVID-19. So I am grounded for the time being. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, well, this means that my primary source of income is pretty much frozen and halted. Uh, so if you have the means, because I'm not the only one that's lost all of their income, uh, there are plenty of other people in a variety of different industries that have lost their income. Um, and if you particularly enjoy the work that I do, if if you enjoy the podcasts and the videos that I put out on a regular basis, which will always be available to consume for free, um, if you would like to contribute to them and have the means to contribute to them, you can do so directly on my website at ramanoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com slash donate. Um, you, you will find the link to my Patreon there. You will find a PayPal link, Venmo Cash App, uh, as well as directly donating and becoming a sustaining member on my website. If you don't like any sort of third-party uh, interference, let's call it, it's probably not the right word, uh, but if you want to donate directly onto my website, there are big orange buttons that you can find that you can donate to. Uh, I am going to be putting out a ton of content during this quarantine. Uh, like I said, I am at six weeks of work lost. Uh, that is going to mean a lot of time <laughs> that I'm not going to be spending touring. Uh, so um, I'm going to be putting up daily videos on my YouTube channel and Facebook pages. 
So if you are not subscribed to those things, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to those things because that's where I'm going to be uploading a ton of stuff. So, uh, like I said, you can go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate to become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation. You can also pick up all of my live stand-up comedy albums that are available on Bandcamp, which is the best place to uh, download them because they give the most amount back to the artist and they are actually going to waive their fees. They are going to waive their cut uh, starting soon, I think within the end of this week. So uh, go check that out. Um, once again, ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com slash donate. Uh, stuff times for everybody. Just make sure that you guys are staying safe. Make sure that you guys are staying positive and be good to each other. We all need each other. Uh, we all We all need to support each other through these very difficult and trying times.